I'm very happy to introduce myself as uh, Robert Emmett Goodridge. I go by the name of Bob. My father, William Emmett Goodridge, who uh, was known as Emmett Goodridge, uh, bought a movie theater in downtown Grand Rapids in 1930. And he wired that building because it had been a theater uh, for live entertainment. Uh, and he wired it for sound and opened in March of 1930 with a very famous movie, All Quiet on the Western Front. And I, uh, uh, as a child, after my father had owned this theater for some years, uh, earned my uh, allowance by uh, working at the theater, uh, taking gum off seats and uh, generally helping the maintenance people clean the theater. Well, my father was one of the few uh, uh, local people that owned his own building. Uh, most of the theaters were run by larger companies. And over the years, um, uh, as I got through school, uh, I ended up uh, buying the uh, theater from my father uh, in the uh, mid-60s. I had, uh, a few years earlier, when I was in college, uh, uh, re gotten a, uh, a release uh, for uh, being out of school for six weeks uh, when my parents took a trip to Europe. So I'd had some experience uh, uh, booking the theater. I mean, I knew the building uh, as a, uh, an attendee and as the son of the owner. But uh, I had never really uh, directly um, uh, on my own uh, until that point in uh, the early 60s dealt with the film companies and uh, having the responsibility for uh, having something on the screen that would be of interest to the public. And I had a mixed circumstance. Um, I remember very well because it was a challenge for me. Uh, I had a couple successes over those six weeks and I had a couple movies that did very poorly. But that stood me in good stead when I uh, uh, we'll finish my education. I'm fortunate enough uh, to have uh, earned uh, law degrees from the University of Michigan uh, and a master's degree in law from New York University. And when I completed those studies in the mid-60s, my father wanted to retire and uh, before I uh, uh, started doing anything with my uh, training, uh, I told him that I would uh, try to find a buyer and indeed, I did advertise to try to sell my father's downtown Savoy Theater in Grand Rapids. I did advertise, uh, really there were no uh, takers, and I quickly uh, uh, got enmeshed in the mechanics of competing with other uh, theater operators for movies. And uh, uh, during the uh, 60s, uh, for about a year or so, I had a modest amount of success and uh, looked around and found an area in Grand Rapids for another theater uh, would make sense. And and I really replicated my father's theater uh, in the second, uh, and I, it was a single screen theater, 600 seats, uh, and uh, it opened uh, in uh, uh, December of uh, 1968, and that really uh, began uh, my career. Uh, now that I had a second theater, one uh, that I was responsible for the rent of, I j continued to uh, uh, look at the business and see what opportunities I could find. And the next ventures I had were uh, acquiring drive-ins uh, in mid small towns in Michigan, uh, Big Rapids, Cadillac, Manistee. And uh, I acquired three drive-ins and then with uh, the two theaters in Grand Rapids and these uh, three drive-ins I was able to uh, secure another developer uh, to help me uh, build a theater. Uh, and this time with um, mortgage money in Battle Creek, Michigan. And uh, that theater opened in the spring of uh, 72 and that really uh, uh, with these now uh, seven screens uh, uh, I had the nucleus of a modest sized company. Uh, I had now been working with the film companies for four years and in asking uh, uh, a couple of, of the film companies about particular movies uh, I'd asked them about their uh, history of showing movies uh, in various cities in the Midwest and one city I asked about was Saginaw and they, they made the observation that there were very few uh, theaters in Saginaw and often uh, the uh, movies that I was looking at I never had an opportunity to play in Saginaw, Saginaw being a bit of a smaller city than Grand Rapids uh, but principally there were just a, a, a difference in the number of theaters so I went to Saginaw uh, and looked around and sure enough there were only about six locations uh, at that time the Fort Saginaw Mall was still operating uh, the Green Acres Theater was operating, there were a couple historic downtown theaters operating um, and, and one or two neighborhood theaters that were playing second-run films. 
uh, after the uh, other theaters in town had played the film, and there were a couple drive-ins. But in comparison to Grand Rapids and even Lansing, uh, Flint, uh, uh, it was uh, under screen. And very fortunately, I found a willing uh, uh, gentleman willing to sell property uh, uh, right uh, where the uh, quad is now. And uh, again, as in Battle Creek, with the support of a bank, uh, I was able to uh, buy the land uh, and, and build the initial uh, quad theater. And it was incredibly uh, lucky for me, uh, and I hope for the citizens of Saginaw, uh, that uh, you know, my theater uh, uh, being the first four screen theater in the area, there were very few four screen theaters in, in Michigan as a whole. It, the, the theater was extremely popular. I, I had a bit of a struggle uh, getting popular films in the first few months, but very quickly because the theater uh, uh, being uh, across the street from uh, Fashion Square Mall, uh, it had a, a very significant success. So when I did get a film, uh, it did proportionally quite well, and the film companies very quickly uh, made me somewhat of a theater of choice, and uh, the um, uh, theater success uh, really was the impetus of my entire company. Uh, it enabled me, uh, you know, within a few years to uh, go back to the bank uh, in Saginaw, because my funding was from a, a Saginaw bank, then Second National Bank. Uh, and asked for additional funding uh, to create what was Michigan's first eight-screen theater because I built a second quad and they were attached uh, at projection booth level and not um, uh, such that the public uh, could go between them. They really were two separate uh, buildings, uh, the North Quad and the South Quad. And I had then the Quad 8 and over the years uh, it became the Quad 10, uh, the Quad 11, the Quad 12, and even for a moment, um, uh, I had a variation called the Saginaw 16. But, um, the latter years, over the last 15, 18 years, it's, it was operated as the Quad, uh, which was second run, and the Saginaw 8, which was first run. But uh, going back to when it became eight screens, it was the first eight screen theater in Michigan, and it did extraordinarily well. It was a, a fortuitous uh, a convergence of uh, Saginaw really being uh, still the outstanding uh, agricultural town, the bean capital, uh, and that uh, activity uh, created a lot of jobs and uh, those uh, people attend that worked in that agricultural business uh, attended my theater, as did all the people in the auto industry. And uh, Sadly, many of those facilities are no longer with us, uh, but 30 years ago, 30, 30 plus years ago, that remade Saginaw, a magnificent um, uh, town uh, which I think it can get back to that level with different activities. Hi, I'm Martin Betts, Goodrich Quality Theater's Chief Operating Officer. Uh, a lot of you may know me as Marty, who may have worked with me in 1979 through 1984 at the Saginaw 8, formerly the Quad 8, when I started working there. Um, I never intended on working at the theater this long or for the company this long. It, it kind of just grew on me. Got the job just before Christmas of 79 when Steve Martin was playing in The Jerk. We also had Apocalypse Now and Bo Derek was starring in 10. The very first night that I worked, I was anticipating working in a parking lot and helping make sure that cars weren't parking on the grass. And it was really cold that day. And so I ended up putting on all kinds of heavy clothes, showed up that evening and then realized very quickly that I'd be tearing tickets and that's what I did for the next couple of years. Um, worked my way up through the ranks and had a lot of good times. Became an usher very quickly and I remember the really big crowds with uh, Apocalypse Now and in certain movies you know like E.T. no one will ever forget how big those crowds were. The theater hit its absolute peak in attendance in 1983 and I was there so it was a real special moment for the theater. Those are the fondest moments really dealing with the big crowds and and meeting all the people that I met and having all the friends that I had. One of the things I did really like as an usher is you're standing at the ticket post and and big movies, you, you always knew when the crescendo was going to hit, you know, when, when the very the last scene where everybody, you know, was out of their chair so the usher knew, okay, I've, I've got two minutes or three minutes before the end of the movie and I can open up the doors to the auditoriums. And it was, you know, movies like Karate Kid when 
when uh, Ralph Macchio hit the hit the guy, the bad guy, in the, in the chops with his with his pelican kick or whatever it was, and everyone the, the theater would erupt, and the movie My Bodyguard was like that, and I think it was Friday the Thirteenth where where Jason comes up out of the water and grabs the guy from the canoe. Uh, all the Star Wars films they were the same way. So when you heard the crowd erupt, you knew it was time. The movie was going to let out and things were starting to hop up again. But I guess the thing I miss most though is just uh, dealing with all the the crowds and having all the fun that we used to have as staff. And and the movies used to be packed tighter together. The schedules were tighter where there was always the three, five, seven, nine shows. And uh, we we get the movies in and the mayhem was behind us. And then there was the hour and a half or hour 40 minute gap to get things cleaned up and resituated for the next set. And uh, those were fun times for everybody. And the popcorn, the largest size then, is the smallest size now. So what was then our big tub that people used to look at and go, wow, how am I expected to eat that whole thing is actually the smallest we have. It tells you how much people have grown to really love popcorn. But um, a lot of things have changed in the industry. And, and you know, I've really appreciated being in it this long. And I don't know, get, having gotten my start there, I'd like to say that it's that it's uh, there's a real soft spot in my heart for the theater, but it's it's a building, you know. The people that I grew up with there and did things with there, and I knew um, those are always going to be with me. And I'm going to grab a souvenir from the theater before it's torn down. But I'm really looking forward to the new theater, and I think everybody in Saginaw is going to really appreciate what we're doing here. Hi, I'm Reed Simon. I'm regional manager with Goodrich Quality Theaters. I started here at the uh, then Quad Eight in uh, 1983 on Easter Day. Um, I can still remember the movie in the big house on that day was Gandhi. The earliest memories I have of the building was really as a patron. Uh, the first movie I can remember seeing here I believe was uh, Star Wars and my uh, mom and dad had to drive me over with friends to see that. One of the more exciting things about turning 16 and getting a driver's license was I could come to the Quad 8 theater and see movies on my own. That was a real big deal for me. Um, also as a customer, I think the, my first dates usually started at the uh, Quad 8 Theater. And for better or for worse, uh, the woman I'm married to now, um, obviously at that point I was already working at the theater as a regional manager, and our first date was here. I can still remember her saying, gee, uh, you're taking me to work? Again, started in 1983, uh, VHS, DVD, streaming video didn't exist at that time. And we would bring in uh, special late shows. Uh, that were events every single Friday night. There was The Who, The Kids Are Alright, Led Zeppelin, The Song Remains the Same, Rocky Horror Picture Show. It, they were many, many sellouts and they were events every single Friday and Saturday night for those. They weren't all hits though. I can remember back in 1986 we showed a certain uh, camp classic nowadays. Uh, at the time it was just a new movie called Mountaintop Motel Massacre. And I can remember walking into the auditorium and just as I'm walking in a customer stands up and goes, this movie stinks, I'm getting a refund. And he walks out and I kind of have to follow him knowing I'm gonna be the guy who has to give him his refund. And as I'm writing out his refund, out walks another customer and then another customer. And before, within a matter of minutes, all 200 or so customers inside that auditorium had walked out of Mountaintop Motel Massacre and we had a completely empty auditorium. But that was the exception to the rule. I think one of the other things that I enjoy about working here at the Quad 8 Theater Quad 10 Theater, Quad 11 Theater, Saginaw 12 Theater, and all the various names that we've gone through, um, is just the look on our patrons' faces as they come out of a movie. Uh, Gandhi, for example, my first movie, you know, people were obviously just blown away by that movie. And Schindler's List, the Saving Private Ryan, uh, Shawshank Redemption, and Lincoln. That said, though, even the tears you see on people's faces out of movies like Les Miserables, uh, is nice, but I have to admit, for better or for worse, the movies that I think I can recall seeing the most people crying is The Notebook. <laughs> and also, uh, quite a few young ladies were crying at the end of uh, one or two of the Twilight movies as well. That's, it's a nice feeling, it really is. I think another great fun thing are the event movies, things like Hunger Games, uh, Catching Fire. Seeing a movie is such an event for our customers that you know they get dressed up, they wait in line for hours uh, to see here. That's, that's really a good feeling. I mean, there is still something, even to this day, where certain movies really touch people's hearts. And it's, it's great to be a part of that. I've been in this building for 10 years and over 
10 years, I've met a lot of people. Um, I've watched friendships and relationships start and grow here. It's like, it's contagious here. Everybody's a big family. One of the neat things about the theater too, when you're 17, 18, 19 years old, working in the theater where, where there's guys and girls working and they're, they're all about the same age and people are going to high school and then they're going to college, you get to meet a lot of different people. And, and it's amazing at the time how many people started dating each other that are still with each other now. The, the guy that originally got me my position at the theater had called me to ask if I was gonna, if I wanted a job. He is still married to the girl that he met at the theater when he was working there. And uh, the girl that I married, uh, Terry, she's still with me and, and she was a cashier at the time and I was an usher at the time. And, and, uh, and I see it continuing now more than ever you hear about people that have met each other and now they're getting married and um, I, I can't even venture to guess how many people have met their their spouses at the theater either. Another thing that's kind of special about working here is you know the people themselves obviously the folks that that have worked with me through the years it's probably not a coincidence that the manager of this theater right now one of the assistant managers of this theater right now they met their husbands and wives in this building working as service staffers uh, and that's not an unusual story in this building. I can't tell you how many times I run into service staffers when I'm shopping or I'm at a restaurant where they make it a point to come up to me and quite often they're with a, another former employee. They met at this building and they made that connection and you know there's a part of it. And also it's not unusual having been here as long as I've been. I'll be, I just celebrated my 30th anniversary with Goodrich, most of it in this building. Uh, to have people come up and, you know, I, they were for, with me when they were 16 or 17 or 18, and they have a child with them who's approaching the age of 16, and they come up and introduce me and say, you gotta go get an interview with this guy. It's a great, it's a great place to work. It's a fun place to work. And more than one or two of them have worked here. I, there's a couple of folks here that are second generation Saginaw 12 employees. And then my own personal memories of people like Tim Short, um, a guy that used to work for us is, you know, gonna be a lifelong friend. There's people that I knew before working here, people like uh, Matt Johnson, uh, who, you know, we were friends before we worked here. I've met quite a few lifelong friends here. Martin Betts, uh, I met when I first started working here at age 19. Uh, Brian Eggstead started working at the theater a few years later. And these are people that I guarantee you I'm gonna be lifelong friends with. They're just, they're very special to me. Um, and just quite a few of our customers are also special as well. When we announced that we were gonna be replacing this theater with a newer theater. I think everybody's very happy to have the new building, but there's many people that just have fond memories of this. Uh, they want a brick, they want a piece of the screen. They want to be here on our final day. And that's, that's very special as well. I mean, it's the building, it's the people that are part of the building, it's, it's just the whole package. It's, this has been very special. I think that the Saginaw 12 and the Quad 8, it's just a part of the fabric that's Saginaw. It's just a big part of the community and it's going to be missed, but I think people will be equally excited, and I think the new Quality 10 is going to be very quickly an important aspect of the community from the artistic standpoint, from the community gathering point. It's, that's what a theater is, that's what the Saginaw 12 was, and hopefully that's what the Quality 10 is going to be. Hi, I'm Brian Eggstead, Regional Manager with Goodrich Quality Theaters. I started with Goodrich Quality Theaters in January of 1987 as an usher at the then Quad 10 Theater. Um, I've worked with Goodrich Quality Theaters for 27 years. Um, I'm currently a regional manager. The Saginaw 12 Theater will always hold a special place in my heart. Um, I've met a lot of great people, um, whether it be in staff that I work with um, or my co-workers. Over the years you build a lot of relationships. Um, and I'm still in contact with a lot of people, um, whether it be in uh, previous assistant managers, staff. You know, we always had those days at the quad, which if you're from Saginaw, you know, regardless if the name's the Saginaw 99 cent quad, quad 12, or, you know, Saginaw 12, we'll always call it, and it'll always be referred to as the quad. Um, growing up, that's where you go to see a movie, it's the quad. I know when I started at the quad in 87, um, Two movies, Outrageous Fortune and Little Shop of Horrors were there and I think the reason I remember those is I was an usher and I, the Little Shop of Horrors song just sticks in my head um, from going in and, you know, cleaning theaters and hearing it, you know, 
three, four times a day, and it just sticks in your head. Little shop, little shop of horrors. <laughs> One of the big things that we had when, when I was manager at uh, Saginaw 12 was uh, the Detroit Lions visited the theater. Uh, they were in town, um, I believe it was 98, 99, um, for spring training. But they'd come and see movies at the theater. I think uh, meeting Bobby Ross, the coach, was, was just really neat. Um, seeing some of the players, we tried to keep it you know, low-key because, you know, of course, you know, they're signing autographs and with the public all the time. And, Barry Sanders was one of the, the Lions that were there, which was really cool, and, uh, and several others. Um, I remember Crocodile Dundee Part 2, um, Beverly Hills Cop 2. You know, we had lines that would go out the north side, which we used to refer to. The Saginaw 8 side used to be the north, the north quad. The, you know, the quad side used to be referred as the south side. We used to go the north side, the south side. And the north side being the Saginaw 8 side, the line would go out the door. We'd have two lines going out. And with Crocodile Dundee Part 2, we had it in three auditoriums. And we thought it was huge because, you know, we're probably talking 800 seats maybe. And the line would wrap out the door, around the front of the south side, and then towards the side of Myers. And it was so cool because we could get through those lines having three, four cashiers. And, you know, we just did things different. And like I said, nowadays we have the... the the box office lines are a lot quicker because a lot of people buy them online. You know, they come in and they purchase tickets, you know, days ahead. I'm Wendy Nahr. I started in Bay City as a regular staffer in 1998, and I was promoted to part-time management in 01, and then promoted to assistant manager at the Hampton Six Theater in Essexville. And then I became an assistant manager here at the Saginaw 8 in the Quad in 2003 and I was promoted to general manager in 2011. Well when I started in 98 the big movie was Titanic. My first day was actually Valentine's Day so all the couples wanted to see Titanic on Valentine's Day. When we had a 35 millimeter film here and the platters would break down and we would have to spin the platters by hand for the whole entire two, two and a half hour movie and customers had no idea that anything was even wrong but our arms would be tired. One of the big things I, I, with with being up in projection with working at the movie theater is the projection itself. You know you have a brain wrap with sometimes you know people understand they're like well can't you just stop the movie and rewind it. When you're talking 35 millimeter film you know you gotta be very careful make sure you're threading it properly making sure it's going through the projector onto the platters um, and occasionally we would have brain wraps and I remember one night <clears throat> excuse me being called 11 o'clock 12 o'clock at night saying that they had a brain wrap and that the film was was pretty well tangled and when I got to the theater the the platter the, the film was just all it was tangled underneath the shafts of the platters and the platter and the brain and, and it probably took us probably I would say six hours to get the film back to where it needed to be. It still played, we didn't have to get a replacement, we didn't do any real damage to the film. There were a couple scenes maybe that there were some scratches on. But it was just I guess the difference between nowadays where, you know, with the digital, you know, you just we can actually do that now. If someone the movie stops, we go back and rewind it. Um, where with film you know, you're on a continuous reel that's continuously moving. And uh, I think that, you know, with the new di digital technology, that's alleviated that. But nothing's worse walking in and seeing just all this film all over the place and knowing that, you know, you either have a show in two hours or you have to cancel a show or you have a whole night because it was the 9 o'clock set when it happened to be up at 11, 12 o'clock the next day. Oh. One of the scariest things that a manager could hear is someone coming out of the theater saying, it looks like their faces are melting. <laughs> and then we knew we had a huge problem and papers would go flying and managers would start running. I guess one thing that, that really stands out in, in my career, and I, I chuckle about it now, but back in May of 1995, um, I was working a shift as the manager and um, one of my staffers had said, hey, there's something wrong with this butter machine. And I went over to the butter machine, and as I lifted it up, uh, shot out flames of, of fire. And so I quickly shut it, you know, and 
got grabbed a fire extinguisher and we tried to get the fire out and it just kept spreading and spreading and it was like one of these things that we thought we had it under control and finally it was just like this is not going to stop no matter how much we dosed it it just it just kept reigniting so I um, I grabbed some scissors because the the cord was caught in the cupboard and I unplugged it I cut the cord I wrapped my arms in paper towels at the time and I pulled out this this butter machine that was on fire and I walked out the front door with it and as I was walking out the front door it because of the heat and stuff of the thing it it collapsed and I did get burnt and um, it was one of those things where um, I got it out to the, the planners, I threw the butter machine out and uh, we got the fire out and I saved the building which you know looking back you know, I'm, I'm glad I did <laughs> but hey maybe we would have got a new building earlier if I just got everyone out right? My company um, uh, with um, uh, having bought my first radio station uh, in the early 80s largely because of the success I was having in Saginaw to some degree uh, with my theaters in Grand Rapids and the one in Battle Creek but it was principally Saginaw that was driving uh, what I was doing. I was very fortunate to buy radio stations over time in Lansing, Michigan, my first, uh, subsequently in Davenport, Iowa, uh, then in Muskegon, Michigan, and then later the last uh, market I acquired theater radio stations in was Grand Rapids. All of we sold my radio station, started acquiring some theaters and building some new theaters, uh, and over the years uh, I've now uh, gotten to the point where I'm operating, including Saginaw, uh, 30 locations in four states uh, uh, with 277 screens. Four of them are IMAX screens, but that has set the stage for what I'm now doing in Saginaw. Uh, this is my first, and I hope uh, the first of, of a handful of theaters in different towns where the building is significantly taller. It's about 38 feet high on average uh, versus about 24 feet of previously built theaters. And we have the uh, joy of presenting to people in Saginaw one screen that's 70 feet wide, a little over 30 feet high, uh, which will present literally a, uh, an almost IMAX uh, environment. Uh, the uh, counterpart to IMAX screens are called premium large format. IMAX is a large format uh, presentation uh, venue. We will have a comparable uh, facility in Saginaw. Uh, we're redefining uh, and identifying this particular room as a giant digital experience, a GDX house uh, with Theater 3, uh, but there'll be two adjacent theaters uh, that uh, will have 55 foot wide screens and uh, just a little less than 30 feet of height, which are phenomenally uh, greater in, in scope uh, than the theaters that people have seen in Saginaw up to this point. In fact, the smallest screen in this tenplex, uh, the screen is going to be uh, some 36 feet wide, which is about the size of the, the larger screens uh, in the current uh, uh, Saginaw 12. And uh, the uh, other variable is the caliber of the seats. Uh, they're all going to be rocking chairs. They're all going to be high back. Uh, I think there, there'll be a physical comfort in sitting in the chairs. All the rooms will be stadium seated where in the existing building we only had one that was stadium seated and then another extremely important component is the sound. Uh, we are going to have three theaters that have Dolby Atlas uh, sound which provides thousands of watts of, of signal uh, that uh, has amplifiers for most of the speakers and you're going to hear a, a differentiation of sound because the room is a much larger cube than the previous buildings uh, the width, the uh, length, as well as the height. Uh, you're going to hear a separation of sound. You'll discreetly hear what is happening uh, behind the screen, on the side walls, and actually behind you. And astoundingly, for the first time, there are actually going to be some speakers put in the ceiling. So you really are surrounded in sound, uh, as well as sitting in a comfortable seat with a, a sufficient leg room uh, and uh, absorbed into a, a large, large screen. Going to a movie is almost going to be like going to a concert. You're almost going to have a feel that it's an event uh, as opposed to the re routine uh, watching of a film, which you can obviously do at home, uh, but with the seats, the sound, the, uh, the entire scale of what we're doing, uh, in addition to the lobby uh, and the auditoriums, uh, I'm confident that this will really be distinctively different than you can otherwise do. And hopefully uh, the kind of magic that occurred 
in 79 when the first Aplex uh, was in Saginaw. Uh, and I'm confident that when you see uh, what the Quality 10 is presenting, you're going to be really quite astounded uh, at the caliber of what you're watching. And I'm looking forward to your frequently coming uh, to the Quality 10 at Tippetawassee and Bay.